Welcome to Sage Audio. Today let's look at how to chain vocal effects. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. EQ or compression first. For this video, I'm going to discuss some common and not so common back to back combinations of plugins. Also, the chapters are in no particular order. Now, a common question when processing vocals is whether to place equalization or compression first. Now, both orders have their benefits and drawbacks. If I place an EQ before compression, I can attenuate unwanted frequencies, causing the compressor to work less. Or I could amplify frequencies, causing the compressor to work harder. Now, when a compressor works harder, we can often get more of the compressor's tone and character. Now, if I compress first and then EQ, the EQ curves will be affecting more dynamically controlled frequency ranges, meaning it may be easier to pull something forward. If the compressor uses makeup gain, though, it might be harder to attenuate unwanted frequencies. Let's take a listen to EQ before compression, used to amplify wanted frequencies, and notice how the compressor has to work a little harder. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. Creating saturation with two effects. Saturation is a combination of soft knee compression and harmonic distortion, which we can recreate using the two effects separately. Typically, the compression aspect will occur first, so let's introduce this along with some makeup gain, and then distort the signal in turn, introducing harmonics. If we want, we could introduce an EQ after the distortion to mimic the frequency response of tape or tube saturation, but let's take a listen to just the first two processors that we discussed. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it helps us bring in more videos. Saturation followed by upward compression. One of my favorite processor combos on vocals is saturation, which includes downward compression and harmonic distortion, followed by upward compression. Upward compression will compress quieter parts of the signal and then amplify them, meaning the harmonics that we generated with the saturation become more apparent and detailed. Let's take a listen to upward compression after saturation and notice how full the vocal becomes. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. Emphasis de-emphasis technique. Like we discussed in chapter one, an EQ can be placed before a processor to emphasize frequencies prior to subsequent processing. For example, if we want a saturator to add more presence to a vocal, we could emphasize 2.5 kilohertz with the EQ prior to saturation. Then to balance the signal, we would de-emphasize that range with another EQ after the saturator. Let's take a listen to this technique. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. Short reverb, then long reverb. When we think about reverb on a vocal, we typically imagine a longer stylized one like a bright plate or a hall, but room emulation is also really important. That's why I like to first use short reverb with dense reflections to make the vocal thick or sound more natural depending on the settings. Then I'll introduce longer reverb to give the vocal more of an identity. Let's take a listen and notice how these two effects complement one another. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. Thick delay, then long reverb. If we want a less natural sound, maybe one reminiscent of classic recordings, we can replace the room emulation that we used last chapter with a short delay. This is gonna make the vocal sound more impressive, but won't have the realism of room emulation. If we follow the delay with plate or chamber emulation, we can achieve a classic and full sound. Let's take a listen. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. EQ, tuning, then saturation. 
Usually vocal tuning is introduced first, but if we use an EQ first, we can emphasize in tune notes and reduce out of tune notes. Then when we tune, the tuner won't have to work as hard, reducing unwanted artifacts or unnatural sounding note changes. Furthermore, we could introduce even ordered harmonic saturation after the tuner, which is also gonna amplify in key notes. Let's take a listen to a vocal tuned with these three processors. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Soothe 2, then vocal tuning. A song's key has seven notes that are in key and five that aren't, so if we know our song's key, we can use this trick. First, I'll create a MIDI track on which I'll place five out of key notes that are constantly being played. I'll use sine waves for the instrument to reduce harmonics. Then I'll mute this track and use it as the external sidechain for Sooth 2, which will be inserted on the vocal. Sooth 2 is gonna attenuate these frequencies since it'll measure them as being too aggressive, resulting in a vocal with less out of key notes. If we follow this with a tuner, then the same concepts that we covered in the last chapter are gonna apply here. Let's take a listen to these plugins being used in this manner and notice how the vocal sounds more in tune and the tuner doesn't have to work as hard. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. Compression and dynamic EQ. If we compress our vocal and use makeup gain, we bring quieter details forward while controlling dynamics. Now, of course, the more aggressive the settings, the more attenuation, but also, the more amplification of low-level signal. If we compress aggressively and follow it with expansion, we'll enhance our vocals. With a dynamic EQ, we could pinpoint which frequency ranges that we want to expand, how aggressively they're expanded, and which frequencies are affected the most by adjusting the Q value. So, let's take a listen to about 8 to 10 dB of compression with makeup gain, followed by expansion via a dynamic EQ, and notice how if we expand important vocal frequency ranges, we get detailed, controlled, and upfront vocals. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. Short compression and long compression. Last up, let's talk about combining compression in series. Now the attack and the release of a compressor controls a lot about the sound. If we set the attack to 2 milliseconds and the release to 50 milliseconds, we'll get dynamic control that's relatively transparent since the level is returned to Unity quickly. If we follow this compressor with a compressor that has a softer knee to trigger compression at quieter levels, an attack of 10 milliseconds and a long release, we can smooth out our vocals as well as contribute to controlling dynamics. So, the first compressor cleanly controls dynamics, whereas the second one shapes the timbre, but doesn't need to be used too aggressively since compressor one did most of the heavy lifting. So let's take a listen to how this controls the dynamics and shapes the timbre. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. It's not too late to set things straight, yeah. I'm smiling at you. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.